In this video, we're looking at concavity and points of inflection. So this time we're focusing on the second derivative and the sign of the second derivative shows us the shape of the graph. So if you have the second derivative where it's greater than zero, we know that the graph of the differential, the first derivative, is increasing and the shape of the overall graph is concave upwards. And what that means is that the gradient is increasing as we're going further along the graph. And a common one uh, that you should know that is concave upwards is a concave up parabola. As we're going from left to right, the gradient is increasing. Now, if we look at the next one here, if the second derivative is less than zero, we know that the graph of the first derivative is decreasing, which means it's concave downwards. And again, you can see that the gradient as we're going from left to right is decreasing. Now, you can also find a stationary point using the second derivative where that equals zero. So the concavity is changing at this point from upwards. If upwards, it becomes downwards, and if downwards, it becomes upwards. Now, a horizontal point of inflection here, there is no change in the concavity at a horizontal point of inflection. And the sign of the second derivative on the left-hand side is the same as on the right-hand side. So we're going to jump in and do a question here. So for what values of x is the curve here, y equals x cubed plus x squared minus 2x minus 1, concave upwards? So as I always do, I think it's a good idea to write down your equation first. Your function. And then we want to find the first derivative. And then we want to find the second derivative. And it's the same process. All right, now that we've got this, the key part of the question was asking us to find when it's concave upwards. Now we know that the second derivative, when it is greater than zero, it's concave upwards. So we're going to use that to help us find these values. So knowing that, we can say that 6x plus 2 needs to be greater than 0. So at this point, it's a normal inequality, and we can just solve it as such. All right, so x is greater than negative a third. So when x is greater than negative a third, our graph is concave upwards. So here's another problem. Find the domain over which the curve x squared, x cubed minus 7x squared plus 1 is concave downwards. So we're going to do the same thing. Uh, you write out your function. We find the first derivative We find the second derivative. Now, this time, we know that the second derivative needs to be less than zero for concave downwards. So knowing that, we can say that 6x minus 14 needs to be less than zero. And again, we just solve it as if it's a normal inequality. So we get x is less than 14 over 6. But the question said we need the domain. Now remember the domain includes all the possible x values. While this inequality is saying x needs to be less than 14.6, we do need to write it in the correct form. So the domain goes from negative infinity because it goes all the way less than 14 over 6, all the way up to 14 over 6. So that is the domain. So the next one we're looking at is for the function here. We have 3x to the power of 5 minus 10x cubed plus 7. And we need to find any points of inflection and then determine which of these points are horizontal points of inflection. So to start with, we do it the exact same way that we did before. You start by writing out your function. We 
we find the first derivative then we find our second derivative and at this point we know remember that our second derivative when it's zero we have stationary points so we're going to use that so we can say that zero needs to equal 60 x cubed minus 60 x all right at this point we notice that 60 is our highest common factor so we can factorize that out to get 60 at the front of x cubed minus x oh 60 x sorry and what we can do there is to that 60 essentially can disappear because if I divide by 60 0 divided by 60 cancels out so I'm left with 0 equals x x squared minus uh, not x there. What am I doing? That's actually 1. Once you've got to this point, you'll notice that inside the brackets, this area here, that's my difference of two squares. So I can factorize that out. So the x out the front stays. So 0 equals x. We get x plus 1 and we get x minus 1. Now, we need to find out what our x values are to make that statement true. So, the first x out the front is x equals 0. We have another x inside the brackets here, and this x needs to be negative 1 here. And then finally, the x over here needs to be 1. Alright, so those are x values where we have a stationary point. So, it just told us we need to find out these inflection points, these stationary points. So all we need to do now is find our y values for this. So I'm going to say let x equals 0. So in our original function, uh, remember which was up here, 3x to the power of 5. We're using that one. So I get 3 times 0 to the power of 5 minus 10 times 0 to the power of 3 plus 7. So I get 7 there. Now I'm going to do this for all the values. I'm not going to put them all out. I'm just going to write down what they are. So if I say let x equal 1, my function 1 equals 0. And then let x equal negative 1. And my function when x is negative 1 equals 14. So I can write a concluding statement. So we have stationary points. at 0, 7, 1, 0, and negative 1, 14. Now we need to determine what type of points these are. Are these horizontal inflection points? So in the same way that we determined in the previous video, we need to write out a table here. So we write x, we have my second derivative here, and we have the sign. So because these x values are actually so close together, we can do it on one big table. So negative 2, negative 1, negative 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.5, 1, and then 2. Now, I will circle our points that were actually most important. So these are what we're looking at. And again, with this second derivative, I'm not going to do all the working out because all you need to do is substitute these values into our second derivative function, which you can see here. All right. So wherever there's an x, we're changing that x to the values we've got listed in the table here. So this becomes negative 360, 0, 22.5, 0, 22.5. 0 and 360. So I can write my signs here. So we have a negative. This one doesn't matter. Positive doesn't matter. Positive, negative. Now remember, a horizontal point of inflection is when there's no change. No change in sign. 
So the only point where this is occurring, if we look at this one here, there's a change in sign, so that's not a horizontal. If we look over here, there's a change in sign, that's not horizontal. But if you notice here, both these are positives, so we can say that 0, 7 is a horizontal point of inflection. So to recap the video, mainly dealing with the second derivative here, and if the second der derivative is greater than zero, it's concave upwards. If the second derivative is less than zero, it's a concave downwards. You can use x uh, the second derivative equals zero to find points of inflection. And remember, if the concavity doesn't change, so if it's going from positive to positive or negative to negative, that is what we call a horizontal point of inflection.